Okay, let's move on to the next trade now. Uh, selling continued to mount on the Treasury market today, lifting yields across the board, pushing the spread to a new record for a second straight uh, session. While some say higher rates signal economic improvement, our next guest says it should be raising a red flag. Peter Schiff, president of Europe Pacific Capital and author of Crash Proof 2.0, joins us from Stanford. Peter, it is always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for having me on again. Historically, rising rates equals a recovering economy. Why is it different this time around? Well, also, rising rates could be a sign of inflation. I think that's what you have here. Remember, the only reason that it looks like the economy is growing is because the Federal Reserve is creating a lot of inflation to artificially prop up the GDP. And I think it's that inflation and inflation expectations that explains the backup in interest rates and not any positive outlook for the economy. So, Peter, it's Karen. If GDP, the GDP seeming growth is really a mirage, then... And inflation isn't really there. Could it be a widening of credit spreads no. that's actually in the long end? Well, inflation isn't the mirage. That's actually here. And but so if the that GDP doesn't perform, if, you know, if GDP growth isn't really there. Yeah, you can, you can still have inflation with a weak economy. In fact, the weaker economy, the worse the inflation is going to get because the Fed fights off the economic weakness by creating inflation. And so in, in, in the worst inflations that have broken out historically, they happen in very weak economies with high levels of unemployment. So you're looking for stagflation? Yes, but with a lot of inflation and a lot of stagnation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peter, do you, any chance you see hyperinflation? Yeah, I, unfortunately, that is the worst case scenario. I don't know how to you know, handicap it, but I do know this. If we don't come to our senses soon, if we continue to push the envelope on the stimulus and pursue this policy, hyperinflation is not only possible, it's inevitable. Pete, take your investor cap off and put your trader cap on real quick. You've seen gold pull back to basically the, the, the levels that India bought their stake. Is this now attractive? As a trader, I know it's attractive all the time to you, but is it more attractive now, given the move we've seen lower? Yeah, I mean, look, we've had a nice pullback. We've dropped over $100 from the highs. I think there's a lot of support, you know, around the $1,000 level or just below. So to the extent that it ever gets back below there again, I would buy all the gold I can get my hands on. But it doesn't mean you have to wait for that. It's a big enough pullback. If you look at the action in the gold stocks, you know, the gold stocks corrected about 20%, while the metal only corrected about 10 But the gold stocks have traded pretty strong in the last couple of days. That's usually the sign of a short-term bottom when you didn't see more weakness in gold stocks, even though... Like gold was down today, but gold stocks are stronger. I think there's a good sign that we've got a short-term bottom. And if you're a trader, you probably want to trade it from the long side. Peter, I apologize. i got to ask you about hyperinflation again because I didn't hear your answer. You truly believe that hyperinflation is coming in 2010? Well, it's not going to hit in 2010. I mean, it's going to hit eventually if we don't change policies. There's still time to do the right thing. There's still time to significantly raise interest rates, you know, to let a lot of these uh, uh, phony uh, financial companies fail, uh, to let the housing market finish its correction. It's not too late, but it's going to involve some tough choices but Peter, politically. And Peter, Peter, you understand though hyperinflation would imply an inflation rate of over 50 percent by definition. Well, it, it, it could be a lot higher than that. But I said it's not coming in 2010, but it might come in 2012, 2013, 2014, if we don't take the correct measures today. But so far, we are marching down the road to hyperinflation because we are pursuing the very policies that every other nation pursued that eventually had hyperinflation. So we have to make the tough political choices to shrink government and to stop the spending and to stop the money printing before it's too late to, to make those decisions. Well, Peter, an inflation rate of over 50 percent in this environment is rather absurd right now but we'll see no, what happens no it's not remember the countries that have the highest rates of inflation have high rates of unemployment you don't have hyperinflation in times of full employment look you know you have it in times of high unemployment peter it's karen so you have no faith bernanke's going to do the right thing well he hasn't done the right thing yet i don't know why he's going to change uh, you know change tunes all right, all right peter we're going to leave it there peter schiff thanks so much for joining us uh, have a great holiday thank you I dig Pete. You dig Pete. You know, he, <laughs> I mean, he says what's on his mind. He doesn't listen. He's unabashed. I mean, he's got a view and he sticks to it. Good for him. Yeah. I mean, he can be somewhat polarizing at times, but I think he's soft enough. <laughs> like here on this so. desk. Nah, he's much better than he used to be. <laughs> <laughs> the soft side of Peter's. That's quite a statement. All right. Let's move on to the next right here. If you uh, raise it, they will come. That seems to be the latest.